Welcome back. In the previous video, we went over creating an application gateway. So we've got that created now. So now what we need to do is we need to attach virtual machines to our application gateway. And the way we're going to do that is using Azure's virtual machine scale sets. This is allows us to just attach hundreds of machines if we wanted to, to the application gateway. So we could individually create regular virtual machines like we did in previous videos and just create like say two of them and then attach them to our application gateway. That would work, but it's not very scalable. So we couldn't, we would have to, if we, if we had like, you know, say one day our, our application got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of requests and the, the de demand went high and it was like maxing out both of our VMs, we'd have to manually go in and create another VM and attach it to the application gateway. That's cumbersome, it's not very efficient, so that's not a good way to go. So what we wanna do is use a virtual machine scale set to kind of automate the creation, the scaling up and down of our virtual machines. So yeah, so, so here's our, our application gateway here, and you see that we have the public IP. I didn't go over this in the last video, but this is the IP we're gonna hit. So when we, when we go here, we go to 40.88 that's gonna hit us right here um, so I'm not sure if I went over that last video but that's 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 what we're gonna use to actually verify that our our you know auto scaling and everything is working you know so let's let's create our let, let's start creating our, our virtual machine scale set but like one thing that that is very nice about the scale sets is you know when our when our uh, machine does or, or application starts to get a heavy load so so say you know you know there was a big post a news outlet you know reference your website so you get all kinds of traffic at one time you know most of the time you'll see sometimes you know websites crash and that's because they don't have auto scaling in the background or something set up so they can't so it can't handle that so what we can do with scale sets is actually set that all right if the CPU gets over 75% then we can say, all right, scale, scale, add more machines, you know, just automatically add more machines, which is awesome. You know, we can also say, you know, maybe Monday through Friday, 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., we get a lot of load, but on the weekends and nights, we don't. So we could also say, you know, let's, let's scale up to 10 machines during the week, but let's, let's automatically scale down on the weekends. So we can do that with, with scale sets as well. So let's let's create that now. Uh, so we can search for virtual machine scale sets. And the pricing for each each virtual machine that's behind a scale set is the same as a regular virtual machine. So you're not charged extra for that. All right, so let's walk through all of these steps on this or let's our subscription our resource group is going to be course resource group. Our virtual machine scale set name, let's just call it course VM SS for virtual machine scale set. Region, again, we'll use US East. Our availability zone, if you remember the previous video, we selected zones one and two, I believe, for our load balancer. So let's do zones one and two as well. And also, what this means now is is so our traffic will be routed between, you know, let's say, let's say if we're in US East, it could be, you know, it could be the, the, the availability zone will be two different cities, maybe. So if like one city got the power went out or got shut down or, or just something happened, or there was an earthquake, I don't know. And that went down. Then what would do is all the machines in, in availability zone two would start to pick up that traffic. So this is another way that, you know, if, this is how all kinds of websites just stay are reliable and, and, and can stay up all the time is because they just they span it across zones. All right. So the image. So in a previous video you saw we, we created the our custom image. Most of the time you're probably going to want to use your custom image because you might have Nginx installed already or, or your, you might have your web application installed. You might have you might have different things installed already so then when when your demand gets high and you have to create when it does create another machine 
you don't want to have to create that machine, then have, once it's created, use a, like a uh, this, the virtual machine extension or CloudNet. You don't want to have to have that install and take a minute and a half to install, because then that's uh, that minute and a half means you know web requests traffic can't go to that machine yet. It takes a minute and a half to uh, set that machine up. So what you want to do is you want you want to have that time to create as as short as possible. You know, there's probably going to be something you're going to need to update, but most of the time you're going to you're going to want to package some things up in your image and then maybe run something like Ansible or CloudInit um, to to do some other things. Um, but for the sake of this um, this course right now, we're going to use the Ubuntu server here and we're going to use CloudInit to 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 set up our nginx server already. We're not going to use spot instances. And then the size, so we can choose the size of our virtual machines. So we'll just we'll just create the de default here. So, you know, every time it spins up a new machine for our scale set, it's going to choose it's going to choose this machine here. You know, this type. So if we have four machines, we'll be charged four times 70, you know, 280 bucks a month we would be we would be charged if we had those running all the time for the entire month. Let's select that up. And then SSH your public key. I'm just going to use a password. Um, the, you're going to want to use an SSH key though. Uh, we got that. So now let's go to the disks. All right. And since these are going to be kind of our production workload, we're going to use a premium uh, disk here. And then we'll we'll do the default encryption at rest. And then we'll we'll attach a data disk. You know, so the data disk, you know, our operating system is going to live on our operating system disk here. But our data disk, this is what will would hold our application essentially. So this would hold all of our application code. You know, we don't really want to store that on the on the um, operating system disk. So we'll keep the name the same. The, the source, you know, we'll keep an empty disk. We don't need 128 gigabytes. <laughs> and for the sake of this, we're just going to cho choose 16. And the encryption type, we'll just create. We'll 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 stick with a default Azure encryption. You know, you can add your own. Uh, you, you need to set up a you know a key vault, uh, which we haven't gotten to yet. So we're just going to leave this the same. Then OK. So that's good. So now let's go to networking. So you remember we we already have our virtual network. So let's let's choose our virtual network. And then it defaults our our subnet here. So we have that BE subnet. So that's the backend subnet. So this subnet is what's going to handle you know the, these machines here. So good. So do we want to use a load balancer? Yes, we do. So you have the choice of an application gateway or the Azure load balancer. We're going to use the application gateway because that's what that's what we've already set up. So let's choose that. Got that. And then the backend pool. So we're going to set this as we only have we set up the one backend pool, but you know, we could create this scale set if we wanted to. And then we could also create a different one that would handle different requests, you know. So, but we're just doing one. So you can you can have multiple backend pools if you need to. So we're good there. So let's go to scaling. So we could have our initial instant count, and what that means is when when this comes up online, we'll ha we're going to have two virtual machines behind our application gateway. And the scaling policy can be manual or custom. Most of the time you want to do custom. So you can have a minimum number of VMs and a maximum number. So the minimum number is like you're going to want, you know, th these are going to be what you want running at all times, no matter what. And then maximum is like, you know, you know, just so you don't get surpri surprise costs, you might want to put a maximum threshold on your, the amount of VMs that can be created. So like no matter what happens, 
if we keep this here, 10 VMs can only be created. And here's our scale out. So the scale out is saying here, here is if, if we get up to 75% CPU usage average, you know, it's going to scale up. It's going to add another virtual machine here, basically. So if we start getting a lot of traffic, you know, we want to say that, all right, if we start getting a little bit of traffic, we're at 75%, let, let's automatically add some more virtual machines to our, to our system. And then duration, so if it's going to 75% in a 10-minute span is right, right now, you can do that. You can adjust that. And you can specify how, how many VMs do you want to increase this by. When this threshold gets hit, how many VMs do you want to create? You know, you could do just one, or you could do five. It, it's, it's up to you on, on what your specific application would need. And then the same thing with the scale in, you know, once you get down back down to like a lower threshold, 25%, then you can have it automatically removing the VMs. You know, so sometimes you might have like two VMs going at one time, and then you get a lot of traffic and it scales up to six VMs, and then that traffic dies off. So then it'll scale back down to the two VMs. So that, that's pretty cool. You know, that's all automated and you don't have to like do anything. So, so that's, that's, that's awesome. So that's what one of the big things about the scale sets and having a load balancer, you know, so if we weren't using scale sets, we'd have to just manually add virtual machines, which is not, not really efficient. So good. So we're just going to go back and click manual just to, for demonstration purposes. Now let's go to management. And we're just going to leave all of this, the defaults here. You have automatic OS upgrades. You you know, if you wanted to turn that on, you can. Um, termination of instances, if you want to be notified, you can. Um, that's fine. Let's go to health. You can enable health monitoring if you want. We're going to leave that as disabled. And then advanced. Um, and we're going to we're going to copy our we're going to add our cloud net script here. We're going to what we're going to do here is so when each VM gets created, it's going to, you know, install Nginx in our web, or essentially it's going to install our web application for us. You know, so we've used this in a previous video. So I'm just going to grab this CloudInit, which this CloudInit script here, all it does is install Nginx and Node and just has a very basic web application. So basically what happens here, what's going to happen is, you know, we start at two, two instances when we create this, we're going to have two instances. So it's going to run this script and install that web server on those two instances. You know, and then let's say we get traffic again. And once we get traffic, it's going to spin up another machine, virtual machine. And when it does that, it's also going to run this script here again. You know, so most of the time you're going to want some type of cloud, cloud in it or um, virtual machine extension to run when your machines um, get spun up. So that's what a custom image might help with. It kind of depends on what what you need. Um, and you'll notice here we don't have the virtual machine extension here like we did when we did a regular virtual machine to just run a bash script if we needed to. The way to do that here is on the virtual machines is you need to use the CLI, the Azure CLI to, to add your extension. Um, so we're not going to go over that right now, but if you if you have a custom image, it won't let you do CloudNet, so you would need to add your, your extension to do your bash script through the CLI to get that going. All right, so I think we're good there. So let's review and create. Let's see if we've set up everything correctly. Perfect, and it passed. So let's create. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. So now what we should be able to do, once this gets set up, we should be able to go to our IP address on our application gateway to hit our web application. All right, so our virtual machine scale set is created. So let's go to it to, to view some things about it. All right, so we've got there. So our status, one out of two succeeded. So let's see, 
What's going on with that? Let's go to instances. All right, so we've got one of the instances is running, the other one's not yet. So, so yeah, so like it still it hasn't, you know, it, we provisioned it. It's still just updating. It hasn't ran yet. So, we need to let's wait for that to be done updating. While it's updating, let's actually go through some of the options here. So you have your networking here, scaling. You know, if you wanted to up adjust your scaling, you know, you can do that here. We've got our disks that we've done, our size. You know, if you wanted to resize the, the, the size of everything, you can do that here. So you got a few different things. Let's go back to our instances. That's still updating. All right, so both of our instances are up and running and ready to receive traffic. So let's try to access them and hit them through a URL. So let's go back to, uh, well actually if we, if we view one of these, you can see that it actually doesn't have a public IP because it, we're not hitting it from the public because when we hit our, 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 our URL, foobar.com or whatever, it hits the application gateway and then the application gateway sends it to here. So we don't need to have this public facing. So let's go to our application gateway. Click it. So what we want to do is we want to find our, our, our public IP. So this is the IP address that you know, hits here. And this could be your domain. This could be foobar.com. And here, so we can copy, paste. And that's really stupid. I'm not sure why Microsoft does this, but you see how we copied it and it included that. Like, why would I want to have that? I, w I just want the URL. I don't want to copy the web server IP. So I don't know why they did that. So now, should I hit here? So now it works. So look. Look at this. Hello world from host course VM 0000. Look, we refreshed. Now look at hello world from host VM 003. You see how that's changing when I when I make different requests? So now it's zero. Let's see if it makes see if you can see that. See it's zero. Now it's three. Now it's zero. Refresh again. It's three. So that's VM 0003. So let's go back. Let's go to our virtual scale set so you can see that it's routing the traffic to the different VMs. So if you look at our instances, so you see have, we have VM, course VM3 and course VM0. That's what we're hitting. So refresh, we're at VM000. So when we loaded this page, it routed the load, the application gateway routed it to to this virtual machine. So now if we refresh again, now it routed it to the 03. So now it routed it to, to this machine. So you can kind of see how it just it routes it um, evenly between different machines. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's the basics of virtual machine skill sets and, and how they work.